Every time I die in a roguelike, I change roguelike. But here's the catch. I only get 10 attempts to complete a roguelike with a randomly selected list of games. First is Wizard of Legend. And honestly, I've never played this game before. But you know what? I'm a great gamer. I'm great at these games. I bet you I could beat it. Probably not, as I'm currently taking more damage than I'd really like to admit to. And I keep making stupid errors. And I bet you I would make that same mistake again. Also, I'm picking an item here that which reduces my total max health in exchange for increasing it every kill, which was definitely a mistake. When you increase max health per kill, it's only increasing the total, not in giving you plus five every time. I would make that same mistake again. Now it is time for the first boss. And honestly, he's quite easy. If the difficulty stays the same, I could definitely beat this game. I'm just too good. And I found this merchant who's letting me trade a billet. Big mistake. I don't know what does what, so I don't know what I think I'll gain. But it seems like the new changes are increasing my power. And I'm dead. Next is Hades 2, which is honestly kind of relieving, as this is a game I actually have experience playing, so I could actually end the challenge right here. The good news is I'm actually doing really well with my build path, because I'm building up for basic attack damage and additional attack range, which will help keep me alive. Though I am struggling a bit with some of the early mini bosses. I'm having no issues defeating the actual first boss, actually due to the build's increase in damage at max range and having a further maximum attack range. Honestly, my confidence in winning this challenge is growing, seeing as I'm flying through these early stages. In fact, I'm even having no major difficulties defeating the second extremely annoying boss. Though I did have to use my Resurrect to get it done. The boss is down with a minimal cost. I still have a decent amount of health left and I'm able to keep on moving. I hate her. I hate her too. At this point, I'm continuing to double down on the build, seeing as the build is working extremely well so far. Though I am struggling quite a bit with the Infernal Beast. I'm so close. I can beat it. I can keep going. Victory is mine. And I'm dead. Game three is Noida. And while I do have some experience playing this game, it's very important to note, I am really bad at this game. And I actually think that bad might be an understatement regarding my skill at Noida. Noida is an extremely strange game to play without streaming due to the streamer integration. Or maybe I just forgot to turn it off. But while we're on the topic of streamer integration, I stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash So if you're interested in more gaming content, be sure to follow over there. I see a shiny object in the water. I want the shiny object, but I'm unaware of a simple but necessary mechanic, the oxygen meter. And I'm dead again. And while I have a bit of experience with this game, by no means am I a pro. The game doesn't seem that complicated, so I should be able to secure my victory. This new weapon is making a huge difference. The poison damage is helping weaken enemies as we pelt them with the basic weapon. Though I am questioning if I should even be using the basic weapon. Go along with the poison shotgun, another upgrade came up, the wind-up gun which is putting us in an amazing position to defeat anything in our way. I'm so confident that I'm going to fight the boss right now. The combination of poison damage and the wind-up gun is making short work of it. And now that we've beaten the boss, I'm really noticing the difficulty ramp up quite quickly. I don't understand how this enemy is even harder than the boss.
Next up is Risk of Rain. So we really just switch from an overhead shooter to a third person shooter. Honestly, my experience of Risk of Rain 2 is about two hours on a flight. So I got no idea what I'm doing. So really, I need to make a quick goal, which is going to be to kill enemies in order to get as much items as I can and find as many ways to power up while finding the teleporter. I'm finding some really sweet upgrades. Like anytime I sprint, I heal. 10 minutes later, the boss is ready to be fought. And I have to use plenty of cheese strategies to make this work because the boss is quite tough. And I feel that while level one was annoying, level two is even worse. It's taking me 17 minutes to find the objective, leading us to boss two, which is going as well as you can see. Why is he tanking so much damage? I spent all this time farming and powering up and it feels like it accomplished absolutely nothing. What is going on? I guess after 17 minutes, I wasn't ready for the boss. Next up is Dead Cells. One of the lucky finds, because we're over halfway through the challenge, and other than our run in Hades, we haven't come close to finishing a game yet. So fortunately, I'm actually quite experienced in Dead Cells, though it has been a while since I played the game. I am confident that I could still beat it. And I'm finding some sweet upgrades, like the Hard Light Sword just because I like brutality builds in the game. I mean, look how much stronger this is. So we continue to upgrade and gain power and continue to change weapons. And now we're moving to the next section, but section three is really starting to show how rusty I am at the game. Like I should use a potion. In fact, I really should use a potion here. But the fact that I didn't led me to my demise. Game seven is the Binding of Isaac, and I am not confident in this one at all. Like, to be honest, before recording this video and this challenge, I've maybe played an hour or two hours five years ago on Nintendo Switch, so I genuinely have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm making tons of stupid mistakes, and I have no idea what any of the powers or abilities I'm getting do. Like, I got this sweet unicorn horn, but I'm wasting so many opportunities to use it well just because I don't know what to do. And now that I'm sitting at one health left, I'm doing quite well, and I think I could beat the boss. Or not. Now we got God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. Honestly, I believe this is the best chance I have at completing one of the challenges because this is a game I actually happen to be good at. And I'm going with a spear build because it's my favorite weapon and I could work towards a range build because like I said with Hades, if I'm able to keep my distance and keep myself from taking damage, it's my best opportunity for survival. And it's very fortunate because the first perks that I found both work towards the play style. But here's the problem with this game. I'm very concerned about how well a ranged build is going to do against the bosses, particularly the final boss. I also figure that if I could find any opportunity to get a realm shift, I should because it'll give us more opportunity to attack, especially the boss. And honestly, I'm going to very quickly go for the chosen fight because we'll have better opportunity to get more power once we get to the grease section of the game. Yeah, no real issues so far. It's going so well. Leading to the first boss fight. And you know what? The build's actually performing quite well against the boss. Allowing us to move on to Greece. And you know, I'm definitely noticing that playing range is giving us the best opportunity of making it because we're doing good damage and we're able to survive very well. Even as we hit harder fights, we're having no issues making it through. Not only that, I'm extremely lucky because I just pulled a perk giving an extra 30% to anything range. 
And as I get more damage, my confidence is growing even more. A damage boost from detonating spears. What does detonating spears mean? It's the main move of this entire build. Let's just move ahead to the fight. I'm gonna take any opportunity I can to impale a spear to detonate at some point. And the charge detonations are doing really good damage. So the build actually is doing quite well against tier, as long as I'm able to fully charge a spear detonation, especially if I have multiple on him. The runics are great for maintaining space. Arms up. Darkness come. Your turn. By the way, I didn't really mention this, but I chose Valor for Rage just because of the survival. The other options aren't as good for survival, and I'm not worried about the damage. If you can survive, you could get the damage off. I feel phase two is going to be harder because Tyr came out now with his shield. But I'm noticing that his charging attacks are giving me plenty of time to actually prepare detonations and throw spears. And now victory is so close. So I'm going to use everything at my disposal because if I lose, I'm back at the start of the game. And I don't think I could beat whatever the next game is. We're so close. We can't afford to make any mistakes. We could do this. We could do this. We could do this. Got it. It's over. It's finally over. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And if there's any more challenges like this that you would want to see, let me know in the comments.